Donald Trump and Jeb Bush went at it on the issue of Syria. Let's check it out. You said defeating ISIS requires defeating Assad, but wouldn't that also put us into conflict with Russia, a country that supports Assad? So doesn't that mean effectively Assad's there to stay? No, it doesn't. And that's the problem. The lack of leadership in this country by Barack Obama, J John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, thinking that uh, this is a policy that works, this policy of containment with ISIS, it's a complete unmitigated disaster. And to allow Russia now to have influence in Syria makes it harder. But we need to destroy ISIS and dispose of Assad to create a stable Syria so that the four million refugees aren't a breeding ground for Islamic jihadists. This is the problem. Donald Trump brought up the fact that he would, he would want to accommodate Russia. Russia is not taking out uh, ISIS. They're, they're attacking our, our, our team, the team that we've been training and the team that we've been supporting. It is absolutely ludicrous to suggest that Russia could be a positive partner in this. Mr. Trump, you were, you were mentioned here. You did say you could get along very well with Vladimir Putin. You did at one point say, let Russia take care of ISIS. Call me a genius. I like him so far, I have to tell you. Let me just tell you this. Jeb is so wrong. Jeb is absolutely so, uh, that's, just so you understand, you know what that is? That's Jeb's special interest in lobbyists talking. Look, let me just tell you something. Jeb, Jeb is so wrong. You got to fight ISIS first. You fight ISIS first. Right now you have Russia, you have Iran, you have them with Assad, and you have them with Syria. You have to knock out ISIS. They're chopping off heads. These are animals. You have to knock them out. You have to knock them off strong. You decide what to do after. You can't fight two wars at one time. If you listen to him and you listen to some of the folks that I've been listening to, that's why we've been in the Middle East for 15 years and we haven't won anything. We've spent $5 trillion in the Middle East because of thinking like that. We've spent five... We, right. And Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham, who backs him, who had zero on his polls. Let me just tell you something. We've spent, we've spent, we've spent, I only tell the truth, lobbyists. We've spent five trillion dollars all over the middle. We have to rebuild our country. We have to rebuild our infrastructure. You listen to that, all you're right, going to be there for another 15. All right, Governor World Bush, War please, please respond. Okay, not only is Trump right. He even threw in at the end there, why are we doing that? We should be here building our infrastructure. What the fuck? For a split second, he morphed into a big time liberal. Okay, so let me, for those of you who don't understand Syria, it's complicated. So let me go ahead and break it down for you a little bit here. What Jeb Bush is advocating for, whether or not he'd tell you straight up like, yes, this is what I'd want to do. If you look at everything he said in its totality, you'd know this is what he's advocating for. He wants to not only get involved in Syria and attack ISIS and attack the jihadists, he also wants to get involved in Syria and attack Assad. And he's advocating, Trump is right, for fighting two wars at the same time. He literally wants to go into Syria and fight both sides of the civil war. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Where did that happen recently? Jeb's brother, George W. Bush, did the exact same thing in Iraq, and that's why we called it a quagmire. We got involved, we were fighting the Sunnis, we were fighting the Shias, there was a civil war going on, we were in the middle of it, and we're fucking attacking both sides. Why? Why would we do that? It doesn't make any sense. And Jeb's like, I am doubling down on Quagmire. Let's do the exact same thing in Syria. I want to attack the Syrian forces, I want to attack the Shias, and I want to attack uh, ISIS, which are one of the rebel groups. And then also, we gotta fact check this too, man. It, it He keeps get, br bringing up this fake talking point of working with Russia Russia is crazy on this and they're not attacking ISIS N yes yes they are fucking attacking ISIS now don't get me wrong uh is Russia really concerned about civilian casualties please no of course they're not concerned about civilian casualties and that's horrific and they should be concerned about civilian casualties but Russia indeed is fighting ISIS they are fighting al-Nusra which is Al-Qaeda in Syria, and they are fighting other jihadist groups and Islamist groups. Now, when he says Russia's attacking our rebels there on the ground, what's he not telling you? Our rebels are fucking backed by Saudi Arabia, and they're Islamist and jihadist in their own right. We covered a story about one of the top moderate rebels who was killed in Syria. Endless quotes about praising bin Laden and he's my brother and Al-Qaeda are my friends. And th these are the people that, the idiots in Washington are like, yeah, let's arm them because we don't like Assad either. 
So fight ISIS, fight Assad, and then arm other Islamists and jihadists in the region so that what, when Assad falls, there's not going to be a power vacuum that's filled by some crazy people who are worse than what was there before? Please, you just, he just doesn't know anything about the Middle East. He's listening to the same idiot neocon advisors that his brother listened to, which fucked us over in Iraq. And now he's out there stumbling and bumbling like, you know, I think that it's more smart to go after both sides. Who the fuck wins an election going, let's get in a quagmire in, in the Middle East and fight both sides in a civil war? Who does that? And then Trump comes along and he's like, yeah, how about no? How about we don't fight two wars? How about if anything, we focus on ISIS? And by the way, we wasted trillions of dollars and we got nothing to show for it in the Middle East. Let's come back and build our infrastructure. He's right. <laughs> he's right. Now, again, I feel a need to keep pointing this out because it's very important. The audience seems like it's against Trump there because they are against Trump there because the audience is not representative of the Republican voters because that audience is packed with RNC people. So uh, when they're cheering Marco Rubio for asinine comments about Ukraine as they did and they're giving fucking standing ovations to boring ass John Kasich for saying things that make no sense, that's... It's not a fair audience where it's actual Republican voters. It is biased against uh, Trump, and not only Trump, Cruz, too, because Cruz is somewhat anti-establishment as well, and that was apparent later on, too. But overall, in that exchange, who won? Trump by a landslide, which is why in the debate polls, he got 75% in some of the polls. He crushed them.